For those of you who don't know Perez Hilton, he became a famous blogger by... By cyberbullying. And now, a message from Miss Amy Winehouse. And you know, all I want to do is just, you know, smuggle drugs in my beehive, you know, and, and, and I, 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 I keep a knife up in my hair and then I just, I just cut myself. This is the message for Zac Efron. You and I would be having sex and lots of it. I knew what I was doing was wrong. I would tell myself all these mantras, all these talking points to, you know, being that drug addict. Well, I'm going to do this because of that. So I would, I, yeah, I would say things like, well, I'm just sharing with my friends online what my friends in private talk about. So why should I treat oh my, God, but my public friends any differently than my private friends? They're not your friends. They're the audience of these people. Perez Hilton, the self-dubbed gossip gangster, was on a roll in 2007 when his content finally went mainstream, receiving millions of hits a day on his website. By 2008, Perez was at the top of his game, making $50,000 a week. In addition to this success, he would also land his own radio show, Radio Perez, which aired on May 5, 2008, and was a nationally syndicated show that ran for nine years. Inspired by radio personality Wendy Williams, Perez took the world of celebrity gossip to a new level when he brought it to the internet. Gone were the days where you had to subscribe to a magazine outlet for the latest gossip. Instead, you could visit his website and get all the juice. According to Perez, he created a new wave of tabloid mania. You know, they say you should keep your friends close and your enemies closer. So, what to do if you're a Hollywood celebrity and you cross paths with a guy named Perez Hilton? He's a gossip blogger who can make and break reputations. He wields a peculiar power because his website is very, very popular. Hilton's Hollywood is a modern day of the locust. Celebrities stripped of their glamour. He not only shows them warts and all, he magnifies the warts. Sometimes there are these like flawed characters that can be both hero and villain, like Britney Spears. She is better than anything I could have ever written. Do you ever feel bad about anything you've written? I don't regret a single thing I've ever written. And I've written some pretty uh, harsh things. I treat the website like a soap opera. You know, I think it's important to have heroes and villains and people that you're rooting for and against. And it's this ongoing storyline that keeps people coming back. Among the saints, Angelina, Oprah, Madonna. The sinners, well, the list goes on and on. Tom Cruise? Crazy. Lindsay Lohan? Troubled. In 2009, Perez would write a book titled Red Carpet Suicide, where he discussed celebrity scandals and their controversial moments. Known for his satire and often offensive commentary, the book is very representative of Perez's content and brand as a celebrity blogger. The Rolling Stone writes, quote, Perez Hilton, self-proclaimed queen of all media and founder of PerezHilton.com, cuts loose with the book that secures his reputation as the most hated man in Hollywood. And the best part? It's hysterically funny and shockingly true. In his book, Perez addresses all things celebrity, beginning with the phenomenon around their weight. Back in 2009, it was quite common for the media to body shame female celebrities, with magazine outlets placing bets on how much they weighed. Perez Hilton would also weigh in and join this topic of discussion. In his book, this is what he had to say about Nicole Richie. Quote, When she was pulled over for a DUI in December 2006, the five foot one Nicole Richie weighed 85 pounds, but she didn't get arrested for being too skinny because there's no law against weighing 85 pounds. I've got to think that if she didn't get pulled over then, she could have totally pushed it to 80 pounds by January. Think how hot her clavicle and bony arms would have looked and how delicate her zombie hands would have been. Her child-sized dresses would have been clinging to her bones, just like on an apartment store hanger. And we all know how good dresses look on the hanger. Remember 2000, when Nicole was Lionel Richie's sort of daughter? A couple years later, she had graduated to being Paris Hilton's cute, chubby sidekick. Then she started to get skinny. Fast. Season by season, she shrank. The pounds were dropping faster than the ratings of their show. Only then did she start landing on the covers of fashion magazines. Never before that. 
Remember that famous shot of Nicole and Lindsay Lohan going out on the town together in 2005? The two bony starlets were on the cover of Star magazine. They were inseparable that summer. Two completely skeletal waifs going out on the town together to show off their bodies. It was disgusting. But it landed them on the cover of every tabloid out there, and they knew exactly what they were doing. Make no mistake about it, and let it be said officially now, Nicole Richie is famous solely because she got scary skinny. That's all. From mean girl to lean girl. Is Lindsay Lohan too thin? Hello, everyone. I'm Trish Bergen. And I'm Paul Boyd. And this is Inside Edition Weekend. They say you can never be too rich or too thin. But after you see the latest pictures of teen queens Lindsay Lohan and Nicole Richie, you may wonder whether they're losing too much weight. They look so gaunt that one newspaper even called them the skeleton crew. Les Trent has more. One look at Lindsay Lohan and Nicole Richie and you immediately notice their weight, or weight loss to be more exact. These pictures are completely jaw-dropping. You see the two starlets out on the town looking unusually thin. Their dramatic look was plastered in the New York Daily News and the caption read, Skeleton Crew. Nicole Richie's disappearing act has been evident for a while. But it's the newly blonde, wildly popular Lindsay Lohan who has tongues wagging. Here she is leaving a Hollywood nightclub with two guys wearing a skimpy red halter dress. As she heads to a truck, you can see how thin her arms are. And when you compare pictures of Lowen, you see just how thin she's gotten. On the left, a red carpet appearance from February 2004 and the newest image from Tuesday. In response to the weight loss uproar, Lindsay's mother, Dina Lowen, says, quote, Lindsay lost weight when she was hospitalized. It's hard to put weight back on. The media is over-dramatizing this. By the way, Lindsay was hospitalized in 2004 for exhaustion. As for Nicole Richie, it didn't go unnoticed when she first appeared on The Simple Life that she was a bit pudgier than her co-star Paris Hilton. The latest edition of Us Magazine asks on its cover, is she too thin? Inside, there's a two-page spread showing Nicole's body makeover. Howard Stern got Nicole on a scale during her visit to his show recently, and the number was a bit shocking. She only weighed in at 97 pounds. It's not unusual for hot young actresses to work hard to stay slim and in shape, but Lindsay Lohan and Nicole Richie have people asking, just how low should you go? Perez was known for commenting on the physical appearances of celebrities. He was known for doodling on their pictures and posting inappropriate illustrations of them on his website. According to Perez, it was fair game to poke fun. In a chapter discussing plastic surgery, here's what he had to say. Look at Raquel Welch and Cher. Now Raquel, she gets it right. She's almost 70 and she looks amazing. She looks hotter now than she was when she was 60. You don't want to be in your 60s and look like Cher. Cher is six years younger than Raquel and she looks like a freak frozen in time. Kenny Rogers is another cautionary tale. He thought he had lines around his eyes, so he went in for a quick fixer-upper. He walked out of the surgeon's office looking like a different person, and he hated his new face. We can't talk about plastic surgery without mentioning the Jackson family. Michael's face is whiter than ivory, and it's melting and falling apart. Latoya's a complete mess, and Janet got a nose job and had her boobs done. The funny thing is, the more work they have done, the more they all start looking like brothers and sisters again. You know, you're, you're, you've physically changed, haven't you? The photographs of you, if I look at them... No, it's from... called adolescence. It's called growing and changing. Y yeah, but even the shape of your face has changed. No, it has not. I've had no plastic surgery on my face, just my nose. It's helped me breathe better so I can hit higher notes and have clear the press... It's like to add on all this stuff. Nothing's been done to my eyes, cheekbones, chins, lips, nothing. They made it all up. Do you think that people do go too far with plastic surgery, generally? Do you think well, it's become... Well, it's up So why are you so defensive when people say, Mick Jagger's had one, Paul McCartney may have had one, oh, Michael Jackson's had one? They don't do it that way. What do they do? They just pick on me like I'm the only one that does it. That's why. According to Perez, celebrity DUIs also trended in the media and on his website. In his book, he has a chapter where he discusses classic celebrity DUIs. On his list are the following. Quote, The Lindsay. Start by going to rehab for drug and alcohol problems. Then go out while wearing a court-ordered anklet that monitors blood alcohol levels. Then less than two weeks later, 
Get in a high-speed car chase along the PCH. Then get yourself a nice blood alcohol level of 0.12 or 0.13 while the cops book you for suspicion of coke possession. Meanwhile, wonder where your mom, the orange Oprah is, during all of this and realize that she's probably pimping out her other daughter. What the fuck, Mom? Oh, come on. It's just a little Lohan holiday punch. Red Bull and vodka? I'm f***ing sober, Mom. God. Calm down, honey. Let's say the serenity prayer together. Cody, go get the camcorder. I'm not f***ing footage. I'm your f***ing daughter. F*** this. I'm f***ing going to a f***ing meeting. Good riddance. Let's decorate this bitch. Tinsel Bukaki. <laughs> <laughs> the Mickey Rourke. Get pulled over while driving a Vespa. Ha, best DUI ever. He made an illegal U-turn, drunk with a hot date grabbing onto him. Have you seen him lately? He should have been arrested for ruining his face. You know what it is? Is, is as time goes by and you're getting older and stuff like that, getting older sucks. You know, I, I hear all this crap about, oh, well, you can age with dignity. Really? That means, just means you're like you're aging gracefully or something? No, you're dying, man. You look like you everything is dropping and falling. In the beginning, it's, it's harder, harder, faster, stronger. Then it's softer, slower, older. I never heard somebody say, give it to me, baby, older, slower, <laughs> softer. No. Give it to me harder, stronger, faster, right? So it's like, you know, it's a process of... I'm not going to accept, I'm not accepting it, you know, stand, you know, laying down or standing up. It's like, there's nothing I can do about it. The Andy Dick. Get hammered and crash your car into a telephone pole. Then flee the scene on foot, only to be tackled by a witness. Then watch as police search your car where they find your stash of coke and marijuana. Well, obviously it's not good. Well, it's not good for not you, good. but it kind of keeps your name in the middle of everything. So maybe... You know what? See this mustache and beard? Yeah. It's, it's, for, it's for a movie that I just shot and I'm doing reshoots on. Really? I'm still working. That's my point. I'm you still... Are, you are still working. I'm still working, Joy. Yeah. So. Well, we're very happy yeah. for you. The Haley Joel Osment. Let everyone know how tough times are for you. Not because you're getting booked for a DUI and pop possession, but because you're doing it in a 1995 Saturn. As a bonus... Colliding with a brick pillar and flipping your car is a great way to see dead people. According to Perez, Hollywood has an addictive personality, and he writes that many of them struggle with crack. In his book, he has a chapter titled Replace a Snack with Crack, writing, quote, Everyone in Hollywood does coke. I would say blow in Hollywood is like alcohol at a high school house party. The more drugs you do, the more privacy you're going to need. Why do you think the Olsen twins are so sneaky and protected? I'm not saying they do drugs, but uh, what the hell are they hiding then? Paris Hilton denied doing drugs in her Larry King interview, but there are pictures and videos of her doing various drug activities. Unlike so many of the party girls in young Hollywood, she's never been to rehab. I was in possession as well as telling the officer that the bag wasn't mine in the purse. All right. Now, first of all, as to the possession, uh, what did you possess? Cocaine. A frank admission from Paris Hilton. She did have cocaine in her purse and lied about it when arrested in Las Vegas on August the 28th. But the heiress's honesty kept her out of jail on this occasion. She struck a plea bargain, admitting possession of the drug and getting a one-year suspended prison sentence, a $2,000 fine and 200 hours community service. Paris spent three weeks in jail in Los Angeles in 2007 for violating her probation after a reckless driving charge. The judge warned her she could find herself behind bars again if she commits another offence. Perez Hilton was very outspoken and said whatever came to mind. In his mind, no matter how mean, he just said what everyone else was thinking. When Perez was at his peak, slut-shaming celebrities, particularly female celebrities, was quite common. In his book, 
he wouldn't shy away from weighing in and commenting on the intimate lives of celebrities. In a chapter titled, Put the Hoe in Hollywood, here's what Perez had to say. Quote, Vanessa Hudgens, Disney star Vanessa Hudgens, went from being a cutesy little crush for straight boys who like musicals to full-blown whack-off material overnight when her new pictures appeared online. Lindsay Lohan can never have too many hot dates. Lindsay had a new one every single week. Even in rehab, she is said to have been caught having sex in a toilet stall with a male patient. No matter what town or even what country she's in, Lindsay is never without a man. She is a vicious predator. Lindsay's been with practically every guy in Hollywood. So what does she do when she's dog tired of bone? She chases the cat. Drew Barrymore. It's never too early to start eating pillow like a Hilton. Drew Barrymore was getting hammered by Hollywood's elite at the age of like what, 10? She was roller skating into the hottest parties and doing jello shots and blow before she was even old enough to get her learner's permit. Angelina Jolie. If you still a mate, do it right. Angelina Jolie appears to be a real-life homewrecker who has a thing for married men. Claire Danes wrecked both the home and her reputation. Britney Spears snatched Kevin Federline from a pregnant Char Jackson. Rose McGowan got with her grindhouse director. No biggie hooking up with the boss, right? Except that he was married with five kids. What up, hoes? It's the motherfucking Jonas Coming at you from the 310. We got something to say about shady ass hoes. I don't want to name no names. Miley Cyrus. So here's a little song we wrote. You know who you are. Miley Cyrus. Un, deux, trois, quatre. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Hey, little M, do, you f***ing shady ass b Like your hymen, I'm glad do, you're not my girl. Do, do, and so concludes this rhyming. Do, do, yeah. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. What, what? Peace in the Midwest, y'all. <gasps> oh, hell no. Hey, what up, y'all? This your girl, Lil Miley. And this little girl right here ain't scared of nobody. Perez Hilton became the go-to for celebrity news on the internet. Another hot topic on his blog was celebrity meltdowns, which he covered in his book, writing, quote, When a Hilton hits rock bottom, it's a totally different kind of event, involving police escorts, viral internet videos, fleeing the hemisphere, and scaring the crap out of Oprah. You've got to shave your head, eat a hamburger through your nose on YouTube, wander into a stranger's house, and then kidnap someone to burn with your crack pipe. Having a meltdown never helped anyone's career, but it is a Hilton rite of passage. In 2007, a video of David Hasselhoff, reportedly taken by one of his kids, surfaced online, showing him incoherent, crawling on the floor, and stuffing his face with a Wendy's hamburger. Shortly after the video circulated, he stated, Because of my honest and positive relationship with my children, who were concerned for my well-being, there was a tape made when I had a relapse to show me what I was like. Say you promise right now, Dad. What? Tell me that you promise you're not going to get alcohol and you're going to stop drinking. Tell me right now. Tell me right now you're going to stop drinking. I'll be fine. Tell me you're going to stop drinking. Tell me right now. Or I'm, I'm not going to talk to you ever again. And I will totally disown you because it's not fair to meet your family. What you're doing. Tell me right now. Tell me. You're not going to stop, are you? I'll be fine. Tell me you're going to stop. I'll be fine. Tell me you're going to stop. Tell me you're going to stop. I'm going to stop. Promise? No. Yes? Mm hmm Good. 
what I like to hear. Perez took advantage of every celebrity scandal. The bigger the scandal, the more money he made. The more screwed up the star was, the more hits and clicks his website received. In his chapter, Just Die Already, Perez weighs in on celebrity death, writing, quote, Real Hiltons leave the world with a thunderous bang of dramatic tragedy, and they wouldn't be caught dead just dying in their beds at 83. Owen Wilson, Britney Spears, Heather Locklear, there have been so many, almost, in recent years. Owen was rushed to the hospital for attempted self-termination. Brittany was strapped onto a gurney and hospitalized against her will. And Heather Locklear shrink thought she was going to off herself and call 911. These failed attempts at tragedy will get you press. 2007 was the year of the Hollywood girls gone wild. Brittany kept you super busy. She was by far the person I wrote about the most on my website. I mean, she began the year in style in Las Vegas, passing out at a club. Shortly after that, went to rehab, left rehab, shaved her head, attacked the paparazzi, went back to rehab, had custody issues with Kevin Federline. I'm only halfway through the year and I'm already exhausted. <laughs> had more custody issues with Kevin Federline, had a disastrous VMA performance, released an album that bombed, more custody drama. Thank you, Britney Spears. Being bad is good for my business. <laughs> oh, I know that. So she's your number one. By far. Your I mean, bread and butter this year. You could not have scripted everything that happened with Britney Spears And then the year. little sister, number two on your list, Jamie Lynn Spears. Pregnant. Something is seriously wrong with that oh, family. Oh my goodness. I blame the mother. <laughs> I yeah, think you and so. a lot of other people. You know, the fact that now she announced this pregnancy, sold the story right. to OK Magazine for a million dollars. She was 16. But you know what? And I don't think this is being said in the media that much. I do give her credit for making the tougher decision and keeping the baby. Okay. Because it could have been easy to go the other route. So good for her. And hopefully 2008, she'll be a better mom and try to have that normal life that she says she wants to, raising the kids in Louisiana, and don't exploit your children. We shall see. We'll see. Number three, Lindsay Lohan. All these young women. You know, Lindsay Lohan was arrested more than once in 2007, uh -huh. was in rehab more than once in 2007. Had a couple of boyfriends in rehab. Yes. Hopefully 2008 will see her out of jail and out of rehab, but I'm not so sure. <laughs> Heath Ledger's death was by far one of the saddest tragedies to hit the entertainment world in a long time. But there is a great lesson to be learned. If you want to be a Hilton, get naked and have your unlicensed masseuse find you on the bed after an alleged OD. If the first person she calls upon finding your limp body is your secret lover, Mary Kate Olsen, then all the better. Then watch from beyond as the secrets about your life surface. The lovers you had, your secret torments, the drugs, the money problems. How come your agent can never find a script this good? The actor Heath Ledger was found dead today in an apartment here in New York City. He was just 28 years old. The Australian-born actor came to huge prominence after his powerful performance in the film Brokeback Mountain. It gained him an Academy Award nomination. Our own Ann Thompson is covering for us here in Manhattan tonight. And good evening. Good evening, Brian. New York police say they are looking at the possibility of an overdose in connection with Heath Ledger's death. His body was found this afternoon in that white building behind me by a housekeeper. Police sources tell our local affiliate WNBC that the housekeeper discovered Keith Ledger's naked body in a bedroom around 3.30 this afternoon. There were pills apparently strewn about the body, and there were two bottles, one for prescription drugs, one for non-prescription drugs. Ledger was best known for his role in Brokeback Mountain, and then this summer he is scheduled to star as the Joker in a Batman sequel. Heath Ledger has a two-year-old daughter with the actress Michelle Williams. They were separated at the time of his death. An autopsy will be conducted tomorrow. Why did all of America put on a big, distraught show over the passing of Anna Nicole Smith? She was a total slut, with fake boobs, who used to be a stripper, posed naked in Playboy, had two kids out of wedlock, did massive amounts of drugs, married a dying 80-year-old man for money, exploited herself and her family on a reality show, and was a nuisance to society for the last decade of her life. She spent at least two years on a downward spiral, and her every move brought her one step closer to the grave. Slurred speech, less clothing, revealing intimate secrets, many lovers, trips to the hospital, extreme weight loss, crazy interviews. 
It was all happening right in front of us. We watched the train wreck and we gave her show great ratings. She stuck to the playbook and went out in style, a model Hilton to the end. She pushed it as far as she could. Anna Nicole couldn't have done it any better. And she is a shining beacon for us all. This may say a lot about our current culture of celebrity and media these days when all the major cable news networks switched over to nonstop live coverage this afternoon when word arrived that Anna Nicole Smith had died. She was 39 years old. She was a lot of things, a former Playboy bunny, a former Supreme Court litigant, and a bona fide celebrity of this media age. NBC's Mark Potter is in Hollywood, Florida tonight outside the hospital where she was rushed earlier today. Mark, good evening. Good evening, Brian. Anna Nicole Smith was found unconscious in her hotel room early this afternoon, but efforts to revive her there failed. At this point in his career, Perez Hilton was the top celebrity blogger and news outlet. After spending years searching for acceptance, he finally found it with the success of his website. But the notoriety came at a cost. Quote, I was the tastemaker, the artist breaker. I was living the dream. But like always, when everything seems to be going your way, I was actually just a hair's breadth from ruin. In reality, I was drowning in negativity. I was stuck, playing a part, too afraid to change, too afraid of losing my readers if I suddenly stopped being so mean. In a professional sense, things were going better than ever. But in terms of my personal life, it had been a complete disaster. I felt more lost than ever. But above all, I was lonely. And I had been comfort eating in an attempt to dampen the sadness. The result, of course, was that I had put on a lot of weight and I had also begun to develop a real complex about how I looked. What do you think led you to that place of what we would, I, you know, what we call today really just bullying. like bullying yeah. and truly beating someone down? I just did it for money. I'm very transparent. Wow. I did it for attention. I did it for views. That's the top line. Then if you want to dig a little deeper, mm -hmm. you know, it was also insecurity. Mm -hmm. It was also me thinking, gosh, this one thing that I'm doing is really resonating. It's working. So I need to do yeah. more of it and even harder. Yeah. So it, it, it progressively became nastier and more toxic. Yeah. That's how dark things often work. You know, like with anything, you, it starts off small and then it'll eat you alive. Well, I think a good comparison in today's day and age, OnlyFans, sure. you know, not to bash anyone that's on OnlyFans, but also it, I wouldn't say it's the most wholesome thing in the world, yeah. but yet it's skyrocketing. People are making millions of dollars a month off of selling their bodies. And in a way you were kind of in that same place of selling your soul in order to gain. But the difference was those people that are doing that aren't hurting anyone. Yeah. Yeah. I was. And I have to live with that. Though Perez was secretly struggling with maintaining the character he built up, his career wouldn't slow down. 2009 would be a big year for Perez as he would find himself embroiled in several confrontations. And in April 2009, he would find himself in a political debate that brought tons of attention his way when he appeared as a judge for the Miss USA pageant. As a judge, Perez was allowed to ask one question during the question and answer segment. This was his question to Miss California. Let's watch the Q&A between Judge Perez Hilton and Miss California, Carrie Prejean. Vermont recently became the fourth state to legalize same-sex marriage. Do you think every state should follow suit? Why or why not? Well, I think it's great that Americans are able to choose one or the other. Um, we live in a land that you can choose same-sex marriage or opposite marriage. And you know what? In my country and in, in, in my family, I think that I believe that a marriage should be between a man and a woman. No offense to anybody out there, but that's how I was raised and that's how I think that it should be between a man and a woman. Thank you. Upon Miss California's response, Perez went back to his hotel room, furious. 
Disappointed with her answer, Perez uploaded the following video. I was the YouTube moment of the show, the pageant, when I asked Miss California her question, and when she gave the worst answer in pageant history. She got booed. I think that was the first time in Miss USA ever that a contestant has been booed. Now, let me explain to you. She lost not because she doesn't believe in gay marriage. Miss California lost because she's a dumb bitch, okay? This is how a person with half a brain answers the question I posed her, which is, Vermont recently legalized same-sex marriages. Do you think other states should follow suit? Why or why not? Well, if I was Miss California with half a brain, I would have said, hmm, Perez, that's a great question. That's a very hot topic in our country right now, and I think that that is a question that each state should decide for themselves, because that's how our forefathers designed our government. You know, the states rule themselves, and then there's certain laws which are federal. She could have said something along those lines, but she didn't. She gave an awful, awful answer which alienated so many people. And Miss California, Miss USA, she doesn't alienate. She unites. She inspires. I am so disappointed in Miss California representing my country. Not because she doesn't believe in gay marriage, but because she doesn't inspire and she doesn't unite. And that is what a Miss California and a Miss USA should. And I could not believe when she became first runner-up. If that girl would have won Miss USA, California, I would have gone up on stage. I shit you not. I would have gone up on stage, snatched that tiara off her head, and run out the door. And then I would have probably been arrested. But you know what? So be it. Oh, thank goodness Miss South Carolina won, or North Carolina, whichever one won. <laughs> because she deserved it so much more. Uh, okay. I need a cocktail now. Perez's feud with Miss California wouldn't be his first or last. Over the course of his career, there were several. Perez had a very public fallout with Lady Gaga, words with Azalea Banks, Amanda Bynes, Jennifer Lawrence, Khloe Kardashian, Katy Perry, and the list goes on. But the feud that shook Perez to the core happened in 2009. Quote, I'm at the dress rehearsal for the Much Music Video Awards in Toronto when I hear a woman's voice behind me. Why have you been writing all those nasty things about me on your website? I turn around and see Fergie from the Black Eyed Peas. Fergie gestures wildly. Why are you being so mean? I don't really have a good answer for her, which is why I continue to ignore her questions. She shakes her head and walks away. The next evening, at the after party, I bump into Will I Am. Hey, Perez, he says, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to never write about my band on your site again. And I take a deep breath before telling him, I mean, I'll try. Other people have started to gather around us. Will I Am continues, why'd you disrespect me, man? I meet his eye for the first time and say, I don't have to respect you. You're such a gay slur. Stop being such a gay slur. Sadly, I didn't even have time to regret my words before from the corner of my eye, I see a man step forward with his fist raised. Everything goes black. So Sunday, yesterday, at the Much Music Awards, I was presenting and I did a skit with the Jonas Brothers. Before that happened, the Black Eyed Peas performed on the live show. One member of their entourage Elb uh, shouldered me. He passed by me. There was a lot of people walking, and he aggressively went like, you know, like a very macho, um, aggro thing. But, you know, I, I brushed it aside. I never thought that something would escalate from that. Like, I can't believe people are getting this upset about me not liking their music or me saying Fergie's fugly or whatever. And he says, yo, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to never write about my band on your website again. Right in my face, he was saying this very aggressively. I was not wanting or trying to antagonizing, antagonize him. So I say, okay, I'll try. He's like, no, 
I need you to never write about my band on your website again. He's like this close to me and screaming. And I was like, listen, I can't make any promises, but I'll try. He, and then he says, why are you disrespecting me? Why are you disrespecting me? And I was like, I'm not disrespecting you. And I did the whole spiel again that I gave Fergie. But it was honest. I told him, listen, you know, I love what you did with the Pussycat Dolls. I love the work that you also did with Fergie's solo album. He's like, you need to respect me. And at that point, in my mind, I was like, you know what? I am not going to let this man intimidate me, which he was clearly trying to do. And that was the reason he came seeking me out. I am not afraid of him. And I was saying that in my head. And I told him, you know what? No, I don't need to respect you. I don't respect you. And that's when I uh, made the split-second decision that I was going to say what I thought was the worst possible thing that thug would ever want to hear. As I was standing my ground without being violent or physical, which I would never do. I told him, and you know what? I don't need to respect you, and you're a fag. You're gay and stopping such a faggot. Then his manager, Polo, whom I have met before, from behind comes up to me, clocks me in the eye right here, and punches me two or three times. I am in shock. I just did not know what to do. I touched my eye. And it was bleeding. I see my fingertips and I'm bleeding. I think my eye might be falling out of my head. And Will I am, fuck you. Because you fucking lied. You fucking motherfucker. You know very well. And I know very well. And God knows it was not a random fan that hit me. You said a random fan hit me in the video you made. You're a fucking liar. You think Fergie's happy with what happened? I hope not. I think Fergie's ashamed of you and Polo. You're shameful. You're disgusting. You are subhuman. And you know what, motherfucker? Well, I, I would have had more respect for you if you hit me yourself. You're a coward. I didn't ask for this. I didn't deserve this. I like writing about other people's drama. I don't want drama in my own life. A few months after this incident, Perez would find himself in yet another confrontation, this time with Miley Cyrus. Quote, I published an upskirt shot of a 17-year-old Miley Cyrus. She was wearing underwear, but it was still an upskirt shot, and she was underage. We got into a huge fight over the picture when I randomly ran into her. What the F were you thinking? She shouted, making everyone around us turn and stare. Miley Cyrus, was she or wasn't she wearing underwear? Only her blogger knows for sure. Perez Hilton caused some controversy this week when he tweeted a provocative photo of 17-year-old Miley Cyrus in which she appeared to be going au natural. He has since removed the image, but the fallout continues. Joining me to tell his side of the story is Perez Hilton. Hey, Perez, how are Hello, you? Hello, good evening, Joy. Good evening. I'm happy to be here. Good. And uh, get to... To speak about this for the first time. Yes, I'm very happy to have you here to do that. Uh, now, Miley is actually wearing underwear in the photo, as you have now pointed out. But you pixelated it. This is my information. You pixelated it in order to look like she wasn't wearing underwear. Now, why did you do that? I didn't pick it for her to look like she wasn't wearing underwear. The point of me choosing that one photo is because it was showing Miley getting out of the car in an unladylike fashion. And I just thought that was funny and in keeping with her shocking behavior of late because she was very well aware that she was in a public place at a, at a video shoot and that they were paparazzi present. Yes, but it, the pixelating of it made it look as though there was something there to hide. That's what it looked like. I, I did not pixelate anything. I did not Photoshop anything. There's been a lot of uh, inaccuracies being perpetuated about what happened in the media. And um, I, I just chose a photo that showed her getting out of the car. You didn't see anything down there. I can't help it, Joy, if America has a very dirty imagination. OK, then why did you take it down if it was so innocent? I did not take the photo down. I didn't even post the photo on my website. I wanted to clear that up as well. I merely linked to a photo that I found on the internet on my Twitter. 
then that website that I posted a link to, they're the ones that took it down. I would have posted the image on my site had I been able to, but it was taken by one photo agency that I don't have a deal with. So I've learned my mistake in the past about using photos that I don't have licenses to. Well, well I think that it was a mistake to put that picture up there, my own personal opinion, because, because it's one thing to show crotch shots of Paris and Brittany, and, and the, and, but Miley is only 17 years old, so that... Um, there's a lot of buzz that you could possibly be charged with child pornography. I mean, what do you think about that? This is a serious issue, Perez. I think it's insulting to children to accuse that of child pornography. If you want to look at the definition of child pornography, it is not an image like the one I posted. It is uh, explicit behavior designed to arouse, engaged in sexual activity. You don't see anything from Miley's private parts. You just see her from a, a, an, an unflattering vantage view getting out of her car. Well, that, but you posted the unflattering vantage view of it, and it, it could be uh, considered arousing, and you could be in very deep trouble. That's the point. In December 2009, Perez even had it out with news station KTLA after he was booked there for an appearance. According to the station, in addition to showing up at the wrong time, Perez caused a scene and was difficult to work with. Perez said we lied about what happened here and he demanded a retraction. Well, demand this, you talentless dope. <laughs> here is what really happened. So Perez, you can take this as my deposition. We booked Perez at his request to promote his new book and appear on our show at 9.20 a.m. Somehow the Perez Hilton staff, not our staff, who he yelled at, by the way, but his staff got him here in a car he commissioned around 8 a.m. And when Perez found out he was on at 9.20, he said he simply could not wait. Now, the available slots on our show yesterday were taken. We had somebody you might have heard of, Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg? Mm -hmm. At 8.45. He looked so handsome. He oh, looked great. He was so nice. Very smooth. Well mannered. We dude. had a children's choir uh, on right at 9 o'clock. Perez said, rather than wait his rightful turn, the other guests, you know, they were here when they were supposed to be here, he needed to leave to work on his blog. We offered Perez the use of our entire KTLA newsroom, even my luxury office, so he could work here. Perez was adamant that that would not do. Perez said he wanted to leave and would be happy to visit us via Skype. You know what? Maybe I can Skype in from my house every day, too. You asked to be here. We promoted you here as being here. Do what you agreed to do and be here. Here's right the bottom on. line. Right on, brother. Right we, on. We did right not on. misrepresent what happened with Perez yesterday, and he knows it. And guess what? The KGLA Morning News and yours truly have been here long before Perez Hilton upchucked his way onto the scene. Yes. And yeah. we will be here long after he slithers away. We will. Yeah. And when all the drama was over, yesterday Perez publicist called and asked if he could be on the show again. Absolutely. When hell freezes <laughs> over. Guess what? Have you been outside? 2009 was a whirlwind for Perez Hilton in terms of his career. But 2010 would be the year that Perez really began to question his content upon several celebrities calling him out and confronting him for it. Perez spent years writing about their hardships and capitalizing off of their troubles. But with the rise of social media, celebrities began building their online presence, which allowed them and their fans to fight back against the gossip gangster. Quote, Aside from giving celebrities awful nicknames and mocking and drawing penises on pictures of them, I often also outed them and published pictures of their kids. It was like I had distanced myself not only from Mario Levandera, but also from the celebrities themselves. And I treated them more like characters in a soap opera than real people. Back then, you got criticized for just some hatred things that had happened. Do you feel at the time, was that just something, it was like a business structure, or was it just because where you were in your life at that time, you think? During that, those years and stuff, what would you say? Because you definitely have changed. Yeah. Um, well, I think it was a combination of things. Like, mm. I think at first it was what it became. And mm -hmm. I think it sort of just got progressively worse. Like it got, the ball, it got bigger yeah, and bigger and bigger. Like energy. Energy is contagious. Like yeah. positive energy is contagious yes. and negative energy is contagious. And if you're not aware of it, it can just become bigger and bigger and bigger on the negative side. And, and the internet can be, I'm not saying it is, I love the internet and I think it does a lot of good, but it could also do a lot of bad. And I also, 
am accountable and take responsibility for all of my actions. And mm. I did a lot of the things I did on purpose. Mm. I, I knew that I would piss people off and I loved that. Mm. And I knew I would piss readers off and I wanted people to disagree with me and leave a comment. And I wanted mm. to shock people and all those things. And you did that. According to Perez Hilton, there's a long list of people whom he has hurt. Though we can't address everyone on that list, we will mention a few. As stated before in part one, Perez was known for outing gay celebrities. He outed Lance Bass, Clay Aiken, Neil Patrick Harris, and more. When asked why he outed gay celebrities, this is what he had to say. How do you respond to criticisms on your choice of outing certain closeted celebrities who would like to keep their personal lives private? I want to treat everyone the same. Why should I treat a gay celebrity keeping a secret different than a heterosexual celebrity keeping a secret? I shouldn't. I should treat them all the same. With this whole Miss California incident, what I've taken away from that is America as a whole is still a very homophobic country. I'm lucky that I live a sheltered life in Los Angeles. And though I'm hopeful that we'll be able to achieve full federal marriage equality within the next 10 to 20 years, getting to the point where gay people are seen as okay and normal and not sinful that's gonna take a lot longer. So a lot of people have issue with me outing celebrities because they think that that will hurt their careers. And it won't. I can't think of one single person that's come out in the last 10 years whose career has suffered. Yes, in the past, it did hurt people's careers. Yes, Rupert Everett's career suffered. Yes, Ellen DeGeneres' career suffered right after she came out. But that was in the 90s and before. Look at Ellen now, extremely successful and loved by America. Am I gonna out a regular person? No. I deal with celebrities and politicians, people that make a choice to live their lives in the public eye. And when you do that, you need to be prepared for the public talking about you and your private life. Perez played a crucial part in the way the media treated Britney Spears during her most vulnerable time. For example, after Heath Ledger died, Perez sold t-shirts on his website with text that read, quote, why couldn't it have been Britney? He frequently spoke about her children, who were babies at the time, calling them, quote, slow and stupid. He was in support of the conservatorship and publicly advocated that she lose custody of her children. Previously on Britney. Well, Britney sure was having a tough time at that rehab center. But you know, Lil Stinky won't let nobody tell her how to pickle her pig's feet. Britney, the drugs are making you dark-sided! Shut the f*** up, Mom. Gorgoyles! With a little tough love and some hard work, a few tears and a puddle of horse blood, she finally made it out of there clean and sober-like. But it wasn't long before Potato Face was up to her old tricks, sniffing all them exotic powders and sucking down that moonshine like it was cactus cooler. Meanwhile, the babies was having a tough time getting out from underneath that overturned tractor. Mom. On his website, Perez posted pictures of underage females where he drew male genitalia on their faces. In his book, Red Carpet Suicide, there's a whole chapter where he talks about the children of celebrities. He's admitted to sabotaging certain celebrities on his website by giving them bad press and writing very nasty things about them. So let's get straight to it, Ryan. I don't want to be starting any rumors, oh, but okay. <laughs> you mentioned it earlier. Miley Cyrus cut her uvula, her uvula on a piece of over chicken. the weekend on a piece of unlubricated chicken. Okay. <laughs> now, in case the uh, Cyrus parents are listening, yes, yeah. Tish and Billy Ray. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, I'm not a doctor or no Miley, but I do know some people 
who've had issues in the past with sticking things in their mouth. Um, and and Are have you cut speaking their uvula. from firsthand experience. No, not me. But this is <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Uh, Sometimes young ladies that are bulimic uh, cut their uvulas off. And I'm not saying that Miley is bulimic, but I would be paying extra close attention to her and her eating habits. Just saying, uh, Miley Cyrus is bulimic. No, I'm no, kidding. I'm kidding. No, she's not. She's not. Uh, no, but I would. But I would. A be, fingernail you know, would if, cut a uvula, a, or a fingernail, or a toothbrush, or something. It sounds painful. Unlubricated chicken. That sounds, well, that sounds but it's, it's all bad. But, but. Realizing that his content was heading down a dark path, Perez decided to rebrand his persona. To do this, Perez made a video in support of the wellness campaign, It Gets Better, a campaign targeted to help prevent self-termination. Unfortunately, however, Perez's video would be met with heavy criticism. Quote, the news reached me that a gay Rutgers University student named Tyler Clementi had jumped off the George Washington Bridge after his roommate secretly filmed him kissing another man in their dorm. Within the space of just a few weeks, another four teenagers took their lives after being bullied because of their sexuality. This led journalist Dan Savage to launch an online wellness campaign called It Gets Better, aiming to prevent self-termination. I was one of the many people who were shocked by what happened. And when I recorded a video in support of the campaign, I had no idea what a storm that would kick up. For those of you who are gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, and having a difficult time being whom you were born, uh, if you're in high school, if you're in middle school, and you're finding it difficult to go to school, to be accepted by your family, I'm here to tell you, it gets better. Not everything gets better. You'll still get pimples like I have on my nose, but most everything in life will get better because you'll be older, you'll be wiser, you'll have experience, and if you're in a really unpleasant situation in a year, in two years, in three years, in a few years, you'll be out of there. I know it may seem like a lot of time now, but... When you start to get older and you're 32, like myself, a year, two years, three years is not that long. I remember when I was 15 and gay, I was so closeted. I went to an all-boy Jesuit school in Miami. And I remember once, vividly, in theology class, a.k.a. religion, the teacher said, you know, there are studies that say that 10% of everybody is gay. And I was like, wow, that's a really revolutionary thought for a Christian school, for a, for a Catholic teacher. And then she had to, of course, add on to that by saying, but you boys are not like everybody else. So I don't think that 10% of you are gay. Your, your percentage is way less. And actually, the percentage was way more than 10 so you should be proud of who you are because it's not a choice to be who you are. You were made this way. As Lady Gaga says, you were born this way. So if you're having a hard time, talk to someone. Talk to a friend. Talk to your parents if you can. Talk to a stranger. Call a hotline. Talk to somebody online. Talk about your feelings. After Perez published his video in support of the It Gets Better campaign, he received a ton of backlash, calling him out. Quote, People wrote such hateful comments that I couldn't bring myself to even read half of them. The strength of the hate storm really shook me and popped the bubble I had been living in. I realized for the first time that it wasn't just a handful of people who disliked what I did. It was the overwhelming majority. I finally understood that the things I wrote genuinely hurt people, and deeply. The comments called me everything from a hypocrite and a bully to part of the problem, asking how I had the nerve to make my own It Gets Better video when I had outed a whole bunch of famous people myself. That was the wake-up call I needed, and just a few days later, I made a video explaining that from that point on, I would be changing the way I wrote about celebrities. As expected, Many people were skeptical about my complete 180 and questioned whether I really meant what I was saying. They thought it was simply an attempt to save my own skin. 
over the last week and a half, a lot of people have said that I am a hypocrite and uh, I'm one of the biggest bullies out there. And there is truth to that. I have on my website said things that have been hurtful to people. I don't see myself as a bully. I've been doing my website for six years now. And in the past, I would justify everything as comedy and humor and these are celebrities. But I don't want to have to justify what I do anymore. I don't want to continue things as they are. I need to change and I'm going to starting today. I no longer will be calling Jennifer Aniston by the, the name that I have referred to her for a long time. I no longer will call Rumor Willis by that name. I'm, I'm not going to sanitize what I do. I still want to be me and be fun and be sassy without being vanilla and also without being malicious or hurtful and nasty. Because if you ask people that know me in the real world, I'm none of those things. I'm actually a really nice guy with a really big heart. And my heart has really been breaking over these sides. And over the fact that I can be doing more through my actions and I have not been, but I'm going to. So starting today, things will be different on my website. You know, I've been thinking about this issue a lot over the last year, year and a half. Would people still visit my site if I wasn't as salacious or as perezious as I used to be? If I was less nasty or biting, would my traffic go down? Well, you know what? Even if it does, I don't care because this is really important to me. This is something that I'm doing because I want to, because I'm growing and I'm going to be 33 years old and I want to be a dad. And no, I don't think it's right to make fun of kids anymore. I did it in the past and I regret it. And I own that and I'm sorry for that. You know, I, I, I do think that, I even hate saying the name now, Maniston is played out. From now on, it's just Jennifer Aniston. The time is now. I am ready to just grow. And I hope that you will grow with me. And I hope that, I hope that I can do good in this world. More than just entertain. In 2010, Perez would make a public promise to show more respect towards the celebrities he covered. He pledged to no longer fuel the toxicity and swore to show more empathy, compassion, and understanding. In 2012, after going through a physical transformation where he lost a lot of weight, Perez went on The Oprah Winfrey Show and discussed his evolution in his personal life, but also in his career. He had recently welcomed his son via surrogacy and credited fatherhood to his newfound spiritual awakening. My purpose is to help other people. My purpose is to inspire other people. My purpose is to make other people smile and to teach other people. I realized, wow, that's my purpose. But then a few weeks after that, all very recently, I had another aha moment. And that was like, wow, my purpose is to help and inspire and teach, make the, better, the world a better place. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Isn't that why we're all here? Upon Perez's transcendence, he would move back to New York City with his son and mother, who was now working for him. In this new era of his life, Perez was bound to turn it around and shed his over-the-top alter ego. But while appearing as a guest on The Howard Stern Show, this happened. Quote, I had been living in New York with my mom and young son for almost a year, when in the summer of 2014, I was invited to take part in The Howard Stern Show during the first five minutes of the interview, nothing much happened. Well, nothing that shocked me anyway. Then out of nowhere, someone on the show brought up a bet that Howard had made with Benji. I knew that Benji was part of Howard Stern's team, so I waved to him and smiled. But Benji didn't return the gesture. Instead, his eyes wandered nervously, which piqued my curiosity. 
Benji said that if he couldn't lose 20 pounds in a month, he had to let someone digitally penetrate him. Out of nowhere, I was asked if I could do it. The situation was completely surreal, and I thought in panic, what am I going to do? What am I going to say? I knew if you agreed to do the Howard Stern show, you knew what you were signing up for, and I felt like I had no choice but to join in. So I said yes. Still, I immediately asked a counter question of my own. Why me? We thought you'd be a good fit for the job, Howard said, but we do have a bit of a problem. The thing is, we can't do any penetration in the building. It's against the law. Perez suggested that they use his place, which was close by. Howard agreed and moved his show to Perez's apartment a few blocks away. According to Perez, once they arrived and settled in, Howard instructed Benji to take off his pants. Perez, are you kissing his neck? This is he going to get on the bed yeah. with Benji? All right, all right. First, let's... Right, let me hear. First, let's let's just look into each other's eyes. Good. All right. <laughs> it's all gonna be hey, good. You said before on the show, I have really nice eyes. You have beautiful eyes. Do you mean that, or are you just saying? I that? mean that. Hmm. So Small let's talk. get. Uh, I want to do everything as Howard requested. Let's get the um, necessities out of the way. Perez, sneak your penis in there. <laughs> <laughs> no! 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 Oh, shut up, Benji. All right, all right, all right go ahead. Are they going to describe I'm Benji's asshole as a claim? And I'll get you ready for a minute. Is Benji's hairy ass? It's ben- it Does Benji have a hairy oh, asshole? We're not. Wait, wait. I'm just, I'm just, I'm not even looking. Look, I'll look into your eyes. Oh, once it hits the 30 second mark. Wait, I'm Perez. I'm find his asshole. Oh, hey. oh, 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 my God. I haven't got yes, you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. What is he go doing? Benji, what no, happened? Don't do it hard. Don't do it hard. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Wait a second. Hold it. Hold it. Oh, don't hurt him. Benji. Benji. Benji, oh, what's go going on? Wait for Howard. Oh, no, 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 be careful. Be careful. Go slow. Go slow. <laughs> Benji, what's going on? <laughs> Benji. Gary, oh. stop this. I, I can't take it. What is happening? I want it stopped. Benji, Benji, do you I, want it's already it? done, Howard. Benji, it's oh. almost done. It's, it's no, almost it's done. not. There's another a minute. No, take it out. Another two minutes. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't take it. I, I'm sick Howard. over this. In his book, Perez shares his thoughts on this incident, writing, quote, The team were all laughing with no compassion at all for my little sex slave. Eventually, Howard decided Benji had suffered enough and he gestured for me to stop. I pulled out my finger with a popping sound, and Benji quickly yanked his underwear and pants back up, avoiding all our eyes. For a moment, I felt guilty, but then I decided that the entire thing was so funny that I had to stop myself from laughing as I took off the glove. After we were done, it was as if I was on drugs. Like, I was so high from that experience. And that day, too, so many people were coming up to me and talking to me about it. Like, at the gym, I had so many people stopping me. It was wild. But it was not without consequence. I was dating somebody at the time in New York City that I was very into. We had gone out on, like, six dates. And that was the most amount of dates I'd been on with somebody in six years or so. So as a result, I think, of that, he ended up dumping me. Though Perez tried to distance himself from the controversial character he built up, he would continue to reinforce it by leaning into this character during his appearance on the reality TV show Celebrity Big Brother UK. It was 2015 when he appeared as a contestant on the show. His presence caused quite the controversy, with Perez having several fights with castmates and spats with production. According to Perez, his season was the highest rated season of the show. When the show wrapped, Perez became a father of two upon welcoming a daughter via surrogacy. After living in New York for about three years, the family moved back to L.A. Upon their arrival, Perez welcomed his youngest daughter in 2017. It's been almost 20 years since Perez began his career as a celebrity blogger. 20 years. And in those years, there were lots of highs and lows. 
When reflecting on his 20-plus year career as a gossip blogger, here's what Perez had to say. Quote, When celebrities are asked if they have any regrets, they always say something like, No, everything I've done and been through has made me into the person I am today. Not me. I have a ton of regrets because I now see that I never needed to be so mean or cruel. I would have been fine anyway just by being who I was. One of the many things I regret, aside from drawing penises all over pictures of celebrities and things like that, I hurt so many people by giving them nasty nicknames, and above all, that I was unkind to the children of celebrities. Some of them were really young, others teenagers, and it makes no difference that I really believed in what I was writing. I also regret that I thought it was okay to out celebrities. That is something I no longer believe. I've tried to help my kids avoid the things that went wrong with my own childhood. I'm proud to be here, nearly 20 years later, having paved the way for all the Instagrammers and YouTubers. Before they came along, there was just me. I've outlasted all my peers, all the magazines and TV shows. I'm awesome. I'm an icon. I'm Perez Hilton. Hey everybody, this is Perez. A few days ago, Jennifer Lawrence was the victim of a really awful breach of her privacy where very intimate nude photos of her surfaced online. They were either stolen from her phone or somebody hacked into her iCloud. I saw these photos and then I was guilty of posting them on my site I'm sorry to Jennifer Lawrence, genuinely, for my carelessness. And I'm going to view this as a good opportunity to learn from and grow from and make some changes going forward. I have reached out to Charlie D'Amelio and her family. I messaged them on Instagram, begging them for help. If anybody could help me right now, it is Charlie D'Amelio's family. And with all of the humility in the world, I grovel to them. And I pray that they can find kindness in their heart to please help me. I had been dating the girlfriend that I had at the time for like probably a year at that point, but we had fallen in love when I was like 15. I was at my uncle's wedding in New Orleans and my aunt like very innocently posted the photos from the photo booth onto her Facebook page. It was like a link for the family to be able to click on and my fans are just a little wild and they found the picture where my girlfriend and I, we were drunk so we had taken a picture kissing. So Perez, he definitely outed me. I wasn't ready because I'm also Latina, you know, so there was that whole looming thing of like, what is my community going to feel about me? Are they even going to accept me? I know that my family obviously accepted me, but was that something that they were willing to deal with on a public scale? Because I had family members who hit me up once it came out, who hit my parents up did like, your family oye, know? oye, ¿qué está pasando? Some of them did, some of them didn't. 